Hello friends, I'm Paul Shin. This is the YouTube channel that's making Model A's cool again. So today's video is all about how to treat other people the way you want to be treated. So this is my 1931 Ford Model A two-door sedan. This car has recently been sold. The new owner has test driven it, had a great time, and absolutely fell in love with this car. He's back home in Kentucky. This car is now waiting to be shipped to Kentucky. First thing I'm going to do is make sure this thing is absolutely 100% ready for its new owner. I'm gonna go through all the fluids and just make sure it's ready, 100% done. So he doesn't have to do anything to this car except drive it. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start by changing the oil and this car has an oil filter, so I'll put a brand new oil filter on it. I've already got one painted, ready to go on. This oil hasn't been in here all that long, so it's not that bad. Looks pretty good, no chunks. Let's check the magnet on the plug here. Nope, nothing going on in there, that's good. This is good. No sludge, no metal pieces, no glitter in the oil. This engine doesn't have that many miles on it though. It's fresh rebuilt, full inserts. Inserted rods, inserted mains. Still has the original slinger type oil seals on it, but it doesn't leak that much. Maybe one or two drops on the floor tops. Maybe, if that. So it's pretty well behaved. So while that's draining, we'll go ahead and check the trans fluid. Just pop this off here. See if anything comes out. Let's see what we got. Just a touch low. Fluid's really, really clean. I'll add a little bit to that, so I'll leave that off. Let's check the overdrive. I just serviced the differential, the overdrive, and the transmission very recently, so I suspect this will still be full and still be pretty clean. But there's one way to find out. Oh yeah, it's clean and it is full. This is good. All right, let's tighten that back up and we'll move on to the rear end. So when Brian was test driving this car, it ended up raining. I'll show some footage of that here. So the car got some uh, water spots all over. This car hadn't been out in the rain in a really, really long time. So while it's up here on the lift, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up too. Oh, look at that. Fluid is perfectly clean and it is full. I just got to pick up the cap. Okay. I feel better already. I'm going to have to wipe all this water spot off. I'm going to show you how I clean the bottom of a car in a minute. Lots of people keep asking about that. Done a few videos on it, but uh, I guess it bears repeating. For cleaning the undersides of a Model A, I use a very unlikely product. I use the 303 protectant, same stuff I use on the tires, on the running board rubber, and stuff like that on the car. It also makes a really good cleaner, believe it or not, because it grabs grease, emulsifies it almost immediately, and then just wipes right off. And it leaves a little bit of a film. It's that UV protectant that's in the product. It just leaves a nice shine on everything. So I use it underneath all the time, and it just Makes everything look cool <laughs> and slick. Check out like all the water spots and stuff on this rear axle. What's this? Gone. Slick. Let's take the back of the rag, buff it out a little bit. This also removes road tar and exhaust smudges, all kinds of stuff. It just works great. So that's why I use a protectant as a cleaner on the bottom side of cars. Oh. Lots of water spots. Okay, I'm going to be busy for a little while. Probably should have started at the front and moved my way back, but yeah, oh well, too late. I know most people probably don't care if the underneath side of their car has water spots. But I do. And like I said, I want this car to be absolutely perfect for its new owner. I want this car to give him and his family as much enjoyment as it's given mine. So I'll just make sure he doesn't have to do anything but drive it, at least for the first year or so. He shouldn't have to do any maintenance or anything. I'll make sure it's totally taken care of and ready. Right, I decided the car is clean, plugs are back in. I'm gonna top off this trans real quick. It doesn't 
isn't going to take much, I don't think. Better. No, no, oh, I got it on me now. Ah, perfect. Oh, it, it's overflowing. Okay, definitely full. fluids done time to grease so why am I greasing the chassis already I just did this like not even 50 miles ago well the reason is this thing's going to be in a trailer and it's going to be bouncing around so even though the wheels aren't turning during transport the suspension is going to be working hard so maybe not it's the same as if the car was on its own wheels but certainly going to be working so I'm just going to make sure everything is well greased so we don't put a bunch of wear on the suspension parts during transport. Remember how I talked about how you can really tell how a Model A's been treated by looking at its shackles? This thing has original new old stock shackles in it that are perfect. And let's keep it that way, shall we? Right, let's get this down, put some oil in it. So you might ask, why am I going through all this trouble for a car that I've already sold, I've already been paid for, it's technically not mine anymore, why go through all this trouble and expense? Well, because it's the right thing to do, that's why. I don't know, maybe that makes me old fashioned, but of course then again, I am old enough to remember when paper bags were being blamed for the destruction of trees and the solution was plastic bags. So, with the car safely at ground level. Before I put oil in it, I'm going to change the oil filter. Yes, I have an oil filter on this car. I've talked about oil filters in videos before. There are two types. There is the full flow and the partial flow. I have used both. This is a full flow oil kit, which means all the oil from the oil pump gets passed through this filter before it makes its way into the crankcase. So absolutely all the oil has to be filtered. There's no bypass. Right now I'm leaking, so let me hurry up and get this off. So I just use the Motorcraft FL1A filters, or sometimes a Fram filter, but I paint them engine colors so they're not quite so obvious looking through the louvers in the hood that you've got an oil filter in there. So there we go. And I also write the mileage on these usually, but I apparently failed on this one. So this is a Fram PH8A filter that I have painted Ford engine color green. I'm going to start by filling it up with oil so the engine doesn't have to wait too long to start getting lubrication after I start it. Right, with that done, you get like one shot at this because it gets messy. All right, here we go. There, hand tight and one more. Uh, that's it. Uh, there's the uh. That's all I need right there. Done. I am asked very frequently, what kind of motor oil do you use in a Model A? I've done a whole video on that. I'll link to it right there. The answer is whatever synthetic happens to be on sale. 530 or 1030 weight. And today's answer is from Kirkland. Full synthetic SAE 5W30 motor oil. It's got all the dinosaur juice. Actually, technically synthetic isn't dinosaur juice. That's right. So there's no dinosaur juice, but it's got all the vitamins and minerals that a Model A needs. Well, since I had to use some out of one and then some out of another, I'm going to have to check it halfway through and make sure that we're not overfilling. Nope. Well on our way though here. That ought to just about do it. Let's see. Yeah, it's so clean I can't see it. <laughs> I can't even tell. <laughs> Somebody put some coloring in this so I can see it. it Need just a skosh more. About five glugs ought to do it. Let's see where we are here. Right on the full mark. I know it's so clean you can't see it, but there it is. Perfect. Let's 
call it Goot. Done. Now before we close the hood, I'm going to go ahead and check the steering box fluid level. Now some of the uh, steering boxes people thread a grease fitting onto it and then people think, oh it takes grease because it doesn't have one of these. No, never, ever, ever, never put grease in your steering box. Use thick oil or I use Hyperlube. This is available from all the auto parts stores. It's really thick, really gooey, and this steering box is not going to take much. Pretty well full. This is good. There we go. Done. All right. Now, now I can close the hood. Okay, done. Now this thing is ready to go. The safety plates out. Ah, oh, feeling old today. Well, I guess I am old because I remember when you used to have to win to get a trophy. Here we go, friends. One fully sorted and fully serviced 1931 Ford Model A already for its new owner. I can't wait for you to meet him, and we're going to do that in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Okay, we're going to see what Dave's new car is. Holy moly, what the? That's a Lamborghini, isn't it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? That's a vulgar display of wealth right there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you.